Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This is all about intentional reflections. This picture was captured on a highly reflective black perspex background, and yet that appears to be grey, almost white. This is due to the background being a reflection of the light source itself, and the highlight in the yolk of the egg is also a reflection of the light source. Getting all the proportions right is down to lighting technique, and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So this is that uh, background that I mentioned. Uh, this is a piece of black uh, perspex. It's highly reflective and will give uh, a very good sharp reflection, just what we want. So on that I'm going to place some eggshells uh, and eventually uh, I'm going to crack an egg open and place that on here as well. So to place the eggshells first, what I'm going to do is just use some tiny pieces of blue tack just on the uh, background here, just to hold up the shells. There we are, otherwise uh, they'll tend to just roll around. This way you can actually predict exactly where they're going to be. So I'll just stick that down like that. And just place that one as well. There. So that's the shells. Uh, now eventually uh, I will use this egg uh, and we'll use that uh, around here somewhere. So I'm just going to place that on the board for now, just to give me something to focus on. So with all that bit set, uh, the next thing to do would be to set up the light. Now for that I'm going to use a uh, flash head with a three foot octobox on the front of it. Now this is one of the rare occasions where actually having a slightly smaller softbox is a good thing. I'll show you why a little later. Okay, so I'm going to place this just behind here, something like that. Now the exact position of this uh, will matter quite a lot. Uh, so we'll just place it there for now uh, and see how that goes. Okay, so with that in that position, I'll place a tripod just at the front here and on the top of the tripod I'll place the camera. I'm using this uh, medium format aerial imaging camera which has been uh, loaned to me and I'm just going to place this right on the top here. Now this has an 80mm uh, Schneider lens on the front of it so if you're using full frame that would be the equivalent of about uh, 50 millimeters. Now to get the actual perspective that I want here I'm going to need to raise this camera up in the air a little uh, and point it down at the subject. So I want quite a high angle for that. So I'm just going to tip that over, like so. And maybe wind it up a little as well. OK. Now this again is uh, a quirk of using this particular camera. There is no viewfinder. Uh, so basically uh, I've got a guess for the time being and then when I have it plugged into Capture One software, which is what will control the camera, uh, I'll also be able to see the result. OK, so with all that set, next thing to do would be to plug the camera in. So there we are, the camera's all plugged in and turned on now and on the software here we can see the settings that I have on the camera at the moment. So I have a shutter speed of 1 1,000th one of a second. I'll come back to that in a minute. I have a sensitivity of 100 ISO and an aperture of f16. Now I'm using a leaf shutter in the lens of this camera which allows me to use a very fast shutter speed which will cut out all of the ambient light. So I don't need to worry about that, even if I was going to use a fairly wide aperture, uh, down to 2.8 or less, I would still not have any contamination from the house lights. Um, obviously, if you're using a uh, full-frame digital SLR, then you're going to have a focal plane shutter and you're going to be limited to the flash sync speed on your camera. Uh, so it's always a good idea just to take a blank frame with no flash 
just to make sure that you get a black image. So what I'm going to do is just grab an image with no flash on, just to take home the point. And there we are, so there's no image there at all. Okay, so with that exercise out of the way, what I can do is turn the flash on, and we'll just grab an image and see what we get. Okay, well that doesn't look too bad at uh, first sight. If I just zoom into 100%, I can just have a little look at the focus. The focus on the eggshells looks pretty good. And I'm actually just looking at the focus on the reflection of the egg and not necessarily the egg itself, because obviously the egg is higher. It's off the surface level. So when I actually crack that open, the egg itself will be quite low down. So I think that's uh, pretty good as it is. So from a focus point of view, that's uh, just what we want. Now you can see here that we're actually getting a reflection of the softbox, which is also what we want. But in order to make this work properly, um, the proportions of that reflection need to be controlled. So what I'm actually going to do is move that uh, to a bit of a higher level, a bit further away. And that will make the reflection smaller. And also, when I come to uh, crack the egg open, it will make the highlight in the yolk slightly smaller as well, which is what I want. So, just to rearrange this then, what I'm going to do, just move this back a bit. And I'm going to take it up in the air. Now, just to control where everything goes, I'm just going to move that out a bit and just tip it down. Out there should do. OK. So, in this new position then, it is uh, quite radically different from where it was before. Uh, so I've moved it quite a, a distance away, and due to the inverse square law, I'm going to need to add a little more energy to give me something like the same exposure. So I'll just take that up by one stop. OK. So with that now set, we'll grab another image and see what we get. OK, well, this is starting to get there now. Uh, the background light isn't in quite the right place yet. I need to move it over a little this way to make it uh, symmetrical. There we are. So with that in a new position, I'll just grab that image again and see what we get. There, that's looking a bit better. And I think uh, at this stage, without actually having a proper egg in the uh, picture, this is almost what I want. Uh, so the size of this in the background is about right, uh, and the quality of the light on the eggshells is looking quite nice. So the next thing to do would be to uh, crack open the egg. I'll just grab an image. Yes, yeah, so that's giving me the sort of thing I want. Not sure I want the bubble, so what I'm going to do is just use this wooden spatula just to burst that. And now we'll just grab that again. There. Oh, that's looking better. I like the way that it's run into the uh, eggshell there. I think that looks quite nice. In fact, if we leave it a little longer, it might run into the other one especially if I encourage it. Oh yes, and you can see in here that we're getting uh, quite a nice dark line around the majority of the egg, which is uh, what I want really. I'll just see if it spreads any further. It's moving ever so slowly, so I'll just grab another image. I think of those I actually like that one. OK, so now with that captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. 
So the first thing to do would be just to make a duplicate of this so we'll have a little bit of redundancy. So what I'm going to do is just right click on the layer here and ask for a duplicate layer but ask for a new document. I will just call this Egg Reflections and click on OK and then the software has made me a new file which is at the top here so I can now just shut down the camera original. And I've always got that to go back to. This is what I will be editing. OK, so I think the first thing to do here would be to just crop the image to the size that I want. So I'm just going to use the cropping tool here. I'm using this for video, so I'm using a specific ratio. And what I want to do is just tighten it up a little, uh, maybe just move it in the frame, something like that. Yes, I think that looks quite nice. So we'll just OK that. So the next thing to do will be just to add an adjustment layer. So I'm just going to add a levels adjustment. And what I want to do is just make this background an accurate grey. The way I'm going to do that is just use the grey point picker here. So I'll just click on that. And now I just pick a point in the background here that I want to be actually grey. So somewhere on there will do, I think. There we go. So it's made a slight change. So if I just go back to layers and I turn this on and off, you should be able to see that that is possibly a tiny bit blue and that is a nice neutral grey. So the next thing to do is to address all the minor imperfections in the background. And the way I'm going to do that is basically just paint them out. So I'm just going to add a new layer, like so. Uh, and I'm going to click on the original layer and just use the colour picker tool up here just to pick uh, a colour on the background. So anywhere around here should do me quite nicely, I think. So I'll just pick that. And now going on to the new layer, what I'm going to do is basically just paint onto that layer with that colour. So grab a brush, nice big soft brush, we'll just paint those around the edges like that and the same on this side. Now you might be able to see that the bits that I've just painted look a slightly different colour uh, and that's because the levels adjustment isn't affecting that at the moment. So what I need to do is just grab that and move it to the top of the stack, like so. There we are. And now that has changed uh, the background so it all matches. So that is what we had without that layer and that is what we've got now. And there we have it. So with just one light and a little lighting technique, I've been able to produce this almost graphic image of this egg and eggshells. By controlling the size and distance of the softbox, I've been able to get just the right highlight and at the same time maintain a good background. And I think overall that has worked rather well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.